What is one red flag that, if seen during an interview, would make you decline a job offer? He asked me, on the phone, whether I was good looking? He asked me what my body was like etc. I was like okay, I'm going to hang up now. This was a job advertised in the London Evening Standard, a respected newspaper. They were really pee off when I told them and this guy must have realized he crossed a line because he wouldn't answer the phone when they tried to get in touch. What pisses me off is that I was so desperate for work that I stayed on that phone a few moments longer than I should have instead of telling him to F. K off straight away. I hate it when people in a position of power abuse it. Completely illegal. Company flew me up. Put me in a hotel. I get to the interview 20 minutes early for an early afternoon interview. I check in 10 minutes early and I'm told that I missed the interview. We change the time to first thing this morning. Someone called you. Left a message. I show them my phone. No missed calls. No voicemail. No. We left a message on your hotel answering machine earlier this morning. But the hotel phone didn't ring this morning. I didn't leave until mid morning for breakfast. We sent it right to voicemail. Didn't want to wake you after your flight last night. Didn't you notice a flashing red light? Nope. Just the red flags. I was asked about my reproductive plans. I like kids, I'm not planning on having any, and it took everything in me not to ask whether they were asking all candidates that question or only the women of childbearing age. After the interview process, I did send them a message to say thank you but no thank you, and to recommend that they review their interviewing questions to make sure they're not positioning themselves to be sued. Their snarky response to that confirmed that I'd made the right choice. That's highly illegal. When they ask you to jot down the names of 10 or more friends and family you might approach with an offer to work under you. Didn't decline a job based on that but was made feeling very uncomfortable. My future boss seemed to know when I was planning to have children as a hint that they would prefer someone who won't be having any yet. Would you be willing to skip class to work regular hours? I was seriously asked this question while trying to get my life together. I politely said no. I didn't get the job but I paid my way through college and graduated last year. Now I'm looking for a career, but I think the hard part is over. I wonder if that crappy, unclean gas station ever found an entry level employee? A hiring manager once asked me what my personal situation was. I responded it was me and my husband. He followed it up with how old are you and are you expecting that situation to change? I am 34 and while not looking to get pregnant, these questions themselves were flags enough to decline the offer. I'm pretty sure that's illegal in a lot of places. What if you hear co-workers complaining? What do you do? Is there anything you can do to improve morale? B. I just work here. I don't give a frick about morale. It's not my job. I can bounce from this job as quickly as I came. This is from a recently amalgamated hospital with a known moral problem from reorganization, i.e. layoffs. Needless to say I didn't take the job. Seriously, unless you're hiring me for the position of moral officer, that's not my job. If they reach out to you and say they're looking to hire someone and ask if you want to come in and interview, but they never say anything about the job or company except maybe the name, and their website is just a bunch of filler stuff that says nothing about what the company does, then don't go for the interview. Blatant racism. A joke can be accepted I guess, but there is a line and for me it's easily passable during an interview. I had a boss at my last job who loved to drop slurs and tell racist jokes about the customers. I asked him to stop and he gave me the old I'm from a different timeline. He was 30. The different time he was talking about was the mid 90s. Everybody is happy here, and nobody wants to leave this job, because how awesome it is to work here. You know, everybody would love to get a place here. This is a very red flag, because basically it means we have huge issues inside. But we are keeping it under the rug, so that the public opinion wouldn't change about our company. I interviewed at a manufacturing facility once, many years ago. They were pretty excited to have me come in, it seemed. I talked with the hiring manager for a while, and I asked if I could see the manufacturing floor. It was a total mess. Dimly lit, whip everywhere, and I could tell that it was not good. When we got back to the office, I told the manager that I was pretty confident that I could dramatically increase their productivity if I could be given some leeway in improving things. 
He said well, that would be up to XXXX, the production manager, you'd technically be reporting to him. I asked if I could meet him, and he said that he was out that day. I asked if I could come in another day to meet him, and he said that XXXX is kind of hard to get along with. Basically, you don't get to meet him before you get hired. LOL. I noped out of that place so fast. I felt bad for the hiring manager, though, you could tell he really wanted someone in there who knew what they were doing. I work in education. I was interviewing for a school and they asked me, how has your walk in the light been? It was over Skype and I laughed, thinking I'd misheard them. I hadn't. They wanted me to promote Jesus in a Muslim country. No thanks. Not a job offer, but I decided to skip an interview after the email I received had lots of grammar errors. The info on the website was very ambiguous such as we work with big clients, and the Glassdoor comments were very similar and sounded like they were written by Pollyanna. My first job was at a local donuts diner restaurant that paid minimum wage. Interview was with the 60 plus year old owner, he ran the place with his wife. First red flag. During the interview he said he didn't speak millennial. I started out cleaning the kitchen, but over the 7 months I was there he slowly started to get rid of the other employees and have me take on their job responsibilities. Run from the counter to the takeout window, do orders, make coffee, etc. All while they didn't have the money to fix the air conditioning. Claustrophobic and unsafe. I stuck it out for 7 months. The final straw was when he bitched at me for messing up an order on a busy day. Like, 60 year old angry Italian man, yelling in your face while wearing a bright yellow work shirt covered in old grease stains. I held a straight face, calmly said I wasn't going to take this, and just walked calmly out with him screaming at me. There was a few red flags at an interview I went to last year. 1. They took me into their surgical suite, animal hospital, and there were minimal machines. This is very unusual. I touched the table thinking it was a treatment room and he wasn't concerned at all. 2. In the hospital worked husband doctor, wife, office manager, and one receptionist. They were looking to hire one vet assistant. 3. There were no animals in the hospital and it was a Thursday or Friday around dinner time. This is the busiest time of the day typically. There weren't any patients in the treatment room or isolation ward. There was one patient who came at the start of my interview for a recheck but it was literally seen and left within 5 minutes. 4. The doctor immediately asked me if he hired me how committed and loyal I would be. Right off the bat. He then stated he had two vet assistants quit within a few months of hiring to work somewhere else. 5. Anytime I asked questions he would get irritated and tell me he was the one to ask the questions. He gave me the worst vibes. My questions were about what kind of machines and equipment they had, what kind of procedures they do, how many clients do they see, what a typical day is like. I went to a better animal hospital and boarding place months later and it was worlds better. They definitely didn't let me go in their surgical suite. I'd already taken the job and it was my orientation day. When I first got there it was pretty deserted because most of the senior staff, all dudes, were at their morning hymn meeting. I noped out the next day. I went to interview at a company that developed software for law firms and when I got there it was basically a startup, but they were in denial that they were a startup. Their 5 developers had workstations set up on a long dining room table looking thing and all had the look like they were dead inside. I humored them, but when they asked what I was passionate about I just went off about how hemp was a wonder material and how it would be key to the American economy in the future. They thankfully did not call me back. I went on an interview for a truck driving job where I deliver those 5 gallon jugs of water to coolers, not sparklets, but you get the idea. Immediately they mentioned that their company survives by getting new customers to carry their brand of water, so the biggest part of my job was to find new customers. Translated, they said that they will no longer have a sales staff, and they will now be requiring their delivery drivers to schmooze companies to allow us to install a water cooler and we would deliver water jugs to them. Of course, the better I do, the bigger the boss's semi-annual bonus would be. I wouldn't get paid more if I am successful, but my success would directly translate into the company surviving. Instead of making excuses, this was one of the few times I openly said thanks for the offer, but this is different than the ad, so this isn't going to work for me. Best of luck, and goodbye.
I think they also mentioned a job would be salary, which is code for, we will require you to work so many hours, that you will get a set salary that ends up being less than minimum wage, which I had already done before at another company. The interviewer started talking poorly about the person who I was replacing. I simply asked why the entire IT staff was gone and he went on a tangent about one person leaving and the others being too lazy to pick up the slack even though they quit. It just seemed odd. Working outdoor construction the winters can be slow so I was looking for a second job. Found an ad on Craigslist for a job delivering produce so I figured I'd give it a shot. Went to the interview. Greeted with a what I want. Had I been a customer client I would have walked right out. Anyways, short interview by an angry old man, crap pay, and I wasn't really interested. A few days later the old man calls asking when I could start. I was working in a basement at the time and lost the call due to poor service. I didn't really want the job so I didn't bother calling back. About an hour later I get a paragraph of text from the old man's son tough talking and threatening me for hanging up on his dad. I feel bad for whoever took that job. Should have called the son just to hang up on him. I wouldn't decline based on this alone but this is more of an annoyance, asking me questions that is clearly answered on my resume you have in your hands if you have actually read it. If you expect me to be prepared for my interview, it would be nice if you did too. As someone who does interviews fairly regularly, part of this is to test your truthfulness. People often put things on their resume or application that aren't accurate and then forget about them. I once interviewed at a Starbucks where the manager told me to never come get me if a customer wanted to talk to him. That if anyone pulled the may I speak with your manager card, to offer to help in any way I could and not get him BC he was too busy. And that if the customer was especially angry, to just stay calm, even if they threw a hot drink on me, and to then just change aprons and keep working. He wanted to hire me, but I declined. The interviewer spent the entire time drawing an org chart with name and position in pencil, then sent me to lunch with the rest of the team who asked me really personal illegal questions, decided that was crappy leadership and not my cup of tea. Huge company and an hour job that should have known better, name rhymes with Paramark. I showed up on time to an interview at a retail store. They made me wait almost 40 minutes before I spoke with someone. They made me wait in the employee lounge where the paint was peeling off the walls, broken chairs and tables and cracks in the floor tiles. I wasn't even mad when they told me an hour and 15 minutes after arriving that I had failed their personality quiz and I would not be hired. This was after I had already spoken with the hiring manager who had said they thought I would be a good fit. They said since it is a farm they can legally pay me a little as $3.50. They said they would never do this. I took this as I was going to get paid minimum wage of $7.25. Nope I got $5 plus piecemeal. All with taxes and perfectly legal. While looking for office jobs. If you walk into the back interview room and Jock Jams is playing while a bunch of others are sitting there with you too, you're about to get a pyramid scheme presentation offer and you should leave immediately. If they have free food please take it to recoup for your time. Been on a few while desperate but never took the free food. F them and fill your belly. I worked for an agency once and my job interview was, I'm not exaggerating, 4 hours long. The majority of the interviewers are talking about herself where she went to school, her whole lifespan including marrying and birthing her children. She would ask me about myself and then almost immediately cut me off and bring it back to her. It was frustrating and I knew it wasn't great but this agency was viewed as the best of the three in the city we were in so I trusted the process. Plus I was desperate for a job. Also, the job was working on the road so I knew I wouldn't be in the office around her much. It ended up being the worst job I ever had. She was such a micromanager, which I can usually handle, but in addition to that everything I did was wrong. Even when I followed her directions exactly, she wanted to train me right, her words, not mine, but actually gave me minimal to no training and dumped me into the job before I was ready. I had to start going to therapy because of it and quit ASAP. TL. DR. Don't accept the job if the interview is 4 hours and they don't find out anything about you, the potential future employee. 
I was actually hired on by a company and when I showed up for onboarding the woman didn't show up or answer her phone. This was on a Wednesday. She then called me the next Monday asking where I was. We set up for that coming Wednesday and then she didn't tell me any of the documents I needed to bring. She gave me a drug test to take to a different place and told me to get it done in the next few days when it needed to be done the same day. I got it done within the next two days and then they weren't going to continue the hiring process. To add on to that I was going to have to pay $15 a month for a parking pass at a job I made $10.25 an hour. Many red flags there I should have listened to. Just recently had a phone interview that I excused myself from. Hiring manager asked if I had kids because, I always have problems with employees with kids. Business owners that play the whole this is a small business card to everything. If they can't pay you the proper award rates, run. This was a red flag that I should have listened to at me old job. My boss said in the interview I can't handle people calling in sick. Basically getting below legal pay and expected to carry her business. This was one of the first interviews. Fresh out of college, I went into this small office and everything looked impersonal and there were boxes here and there, but I thought the office was new and didn't give it much thought. Another candidate, a man in his 40s, got in at the same time as me and went in first. The walls were very thin so I, more or less, could hear all the dialogue. Most of it was along the lines of this is a very hard position, you're going to be ready to work a lot. And are you really sure you're ready to take on this responsibility? It didn't deter me and I waited for my turn. When I got in the tune was completely different. This is the perfect job for you. You are going to do amazing. Honey, we can't wait to have you. Needless to say I got creeped out and never called back. I had one take me on a tour while walking around. He pointed out the boss's office and noted that I should always be sure to make a walk by when I work on Saturday so the boss sees my face. Nope. Long story short, had a job that wouldn't tell me what my pay was until I threatened not to come in. Turned out they want to pay me about $8 an hour, as an experienced carpenter, to work with and primarily supervise laborers making around $20 an hour. This was a nationwide disaster cleanup company. When the director, person interviewing you or someone with some authority has a terrible office, the director that interviewed me had an office which looked more like a storage room that someone decided to turn into an office by shoving a desk and a cabinet into. That room was disgusting from all the dust and dirt everywhere to the broken furniture piled into the small room to make it into an office. If this place was treating a director like hot garbage then I can't even begin to imagine how they treat staff members. Note that this job was for a hospital and for the office to be so unsanitary for a director of foods and nutrition wasn't just a red flag for employment but more of a red flag on the hospital as a whole. We want people who will stay until the job is done, not clock out at 5. Yet, yeah, you have a culture of overwork, understaffing, and not spending money when you should. No thanks. If they say you'll be required to wear men hats that's code for overworked and underpaid. I'm also wary of anyone who mentions any compensation as industry competitive. Like why do you feel the need to say that? Lastly, a question I often ask a future manager is how they communicate their needs and expectations and how they would like to be updated of progress. If they feel micromanage why or they give some vague furtive answers, I know they have no idea what they are doing was applying for a security position at Ross. During the interview about three people called into the manager to quit and she took time out of the interview to convince them to not quit. As if that weren't enough I told her during the interview that I would be going on a one week vacation starting within the next few days. She then explicitly told me to not complete the following employment confirmation email until after I was back from vacation and that she'd mark that down as they'd need to start me within a day or two after me completing it. Lo and behold about 2-3 days into vacation I get the email and a follow up call asking why I haven't completed it yet. Needless to say I didn't take the job. One thing I experienced was as follows. The manager met me at my job and said I seemed like I would have a knack for the line of work he's in. I, being unhappy in my current job, perked up hoping this would be a good transition opportunity. First red flag, he didn't tell me to come by an office job location for an interview, but to meet up for lunch. Again, I, being young and naive, didn't see anything wrong with that. Fast forward to the lunch, 
I began to notice what was going on, but didn't want to be rude. Second red flag. The guy tried not to mention the company name. Toward the end of the interview he asked me so, on a scale on 110, what's your interest level and I asked him the name of the company and once he told me, I let him know that I was going to research the company to see if I wanted to continue with the process. Long story short, the company was Primerica, which in my opinion is the worst MLM scheme I know of. If you do a little research, I'm sure you'll agree. Once I showed up for an interview in an office building that turned out to be Primerica. Once I realized what it was, I got up to leave and an employee there just happened to walk by and said you give us a good feeling. I hope you'll be a part of our team, so I smiled, said thank you, and stole every single one of their magazines on display, and just walked out. I turned one down when I noticed the average age of employees was about 20 plus years older than me but at the same time the entire department I would be working for had turned over in the last 6 months, still that much older than me. I'm not sure what that points to but I noped out of there quick. Probably a place that took seniority very seriously and nobody wanted to fight with people who've been there forever. Good call though. My friend calls it a firing squad when you walk into an interview and you're seated in front of multiple people who just start shooting off questions at you. No conversation. No emotion. Nothing to make you feel at ease. Strictly Q&A. After years at a company, I went on my first interview. Very rusty. They wouldn't even ask me to expand on certain points. I was discouraged until I went on another one that was 1000x better. Just me and a few people sitting at a round table discussing my skills and such. I learned the former kind of interview is one at a place I don't want to work at. I hate multiple interviewers. One is asking a question. One is analyzing your response to tear it down. One is thinking up the next question. It feels a lot like you're getting gangbanged. When the information the job interviewer gives you doesn't even match the job listing. When they make you sit at two different rooms for a good 30 minutes before it starts. Job hunting can be one of the most demoralizing process to go through. When the HR interviewer has a huge fake smile but while they led me to the meeting room where the technical part will take place I see a lot of burned out people with dead eyes and zombie like faces. Unless you're at the point in your career where people actively hunt you. Which you'll know if that's the case, an interviewer making a pitch means run. For most of us interviews are when we try and convince the employer we're worth hiring. You get some smiley interviewer selling you the job then get the heck out now. I study history and I work for a gardener to earn some money. Once, I applied for a job in an archive because the job would have a lot more to do with my major. The interview was terrible. They made me talk about gardening for nearly an hour. Interviews usually last 30 minutes where I live. I wanted to talk about my achievements in history because of the obvious connection to the archive, but all they wanted to know was how to trim trees and hedges. Also, they said that I'd have to be there at 8am to work and emphasize on how early that is and asked if I could handle that. When I said yes, they didn't believe me. I start gardening at 7.50. So, a lot of these weird questions. There's a big company in my province. Apparently they have pretty strict interviews but in the end you have to meet the CEO and you get to talk to him about whatever topic comes up. Friend of a friend talked about Clidestales for 45 minutes. He got the job. Two interviews I saw fights break out between staff. One was a heated discussion between a staffer saying he was going to quit and an abusive manager saying he wouldn't do it because he was a coward. His family would be disappointed in him. And he always says he's going to but never follows through because he was chicken crap. We were just passing by the office kitchen where this was occurring on the way to be interviewed. I was told to ignore them. That those two had problems. I have no idea if those people would be in my management chain. But I didn't pass the interview anyway. And I didn't really care that they didn't call me back. There was a lot that went wrong in that interview. But that was the first red flag. The second was an interview where there was no mouse on the test computer where I was supposed to show that I knew how to set up an OZ instance. The guy who was interviewing me wandered around the office for a while, came back with a wireless mouse, and while I was using it someone came into the meeting room where we were interviewing, and took the mouse back from me forcefully. He looked at the guy who was interviewing me, and angrily told him that it was his mouse that he had brought from home because they didn't have enough mice in the office. 
and to get one of his own, the interviewer had to find another mouse that was a company undergoing a buyout, and everybody was pretty much at everyone's throats. I told the recruiter who sent me there about the entire experience, and said I wouldn't accept the job if they offered it to me. I ended up accepting another job before they ever got back to me, but I got feedback that I interviewed quite well, even though I failed pretty much every test they gave me. That second interview sounds like something straight out of the office. Got. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.